For thousands of years, we humans have defined ourselves by our ability to create and use tools. It is the story of our civilization, from the first sharpened stone to the supercomputers in our pockets. We often see it as the one thing that truly separates us from the rest of the animal kingdom. But what if I told you that in remote forests and on distant shores, another group of primates has entered its own stone age? What if the line between you as and them is far blurrier than we ever imagined? Before we crack open this incredible topic, if you love discovering the surprising intelligence of primates, please make sure you subscribe to our channel, Monkeylo. And remember to like and share this video. Your support helps us to continue our exploration of the amazing monkey world. Now, let's pick up the tools and get to work. When we ask if monkeys can use tools, we are not talking about a random, one-off accident. We are talking about a deliberate, learned behavior where a monkey uses an object to achieve a specific goal. And the undisputed champions of this are the brilliant capuchin monkeys of South America. For these monkeys, a tough, delicious palm nut is a treasure locked inside a nearly impenetrable shell. Their teeth are not strong enough to break it, but the capuchins have a solution. They have become master stonemasons. A capuchin will search for the perfect tool for the job. It will not just pick up any rock. It will test different stones, feeling their weight and heft. It will then carry this chosen hammer stone which can sometimes be half its own body weight, to a special spot, often a large flat rock or a sturdy tree root that it uses as an anvil. Then, with remarkable precision and force, it will smash the nut until it cracks open, revealing the rich prize inside. This is not instinct. This is culture. This is a skill that takes a young capuchin years to master. It learns by watching its mother and other experienced adults in the troop. It is a secret recipe for survival, passed down from one generation to the next. This is true, undeniable tool use, a behavior so complex that scientists refer to these specific monkey populations as having entered their own stone age. But is this just a one-off trick, a single flash of brilliance, or does it go deeper? What if a tool was not used for brute force? but for a delicate, clever task. For this, we look to other monkeys who have found different solutions to different problems. Imagine being thirsty, but the only water available is in a deep hole in a tree, too small for you to get your mouth into. What do you do? Some monkeys have invented their own sponges. They will find a bundle of dry leaves, chew them up a bit to make them more absorbent, and then dip this leafy sponge into the hole. The sponge soaks up the water, and the monkey can then suck the moisture out. It is a simple but ingenious invention. Others have been seen using large, sturdy leaves as makeshift cups to scoop up and drink water. So we have seen monkeys use tools for brute force and for delicate tasks. But what about personal hygiene? Could a monkey really invent something as specific and as human-like as dental floss? The answer is a mind-blowing yes. In Thailand, Long-tailed macaques that live near humans have been observed doing something truly incredible. After a meal, they will sometimes search for a long, thin strand of human hair, which is often shed by tourists. They will then take this hair and, with incredible dexterity, use it to floss between their teeth, removing annoying food particles. And just like the capuchins with their stones, this is a learned behavior. Mothers have been seen actively teaching their young infants how to do it. Holding the strand of hair and guiding the baby's hands, it is a cultural tradition of dental care. This is a level of specific problem-solving tool, use that is so familiar to our own lives, it is almost hard to believe. This level of tool use is already amazing. But what if a tool was not a rock, a leaf, or a piece of hair? What if a monkey could use a living creature as a kind of medicine cabinet? This is a behavior known as zoopharmacognosy, and it completely changes our definition of what a tool can be. Monkeys in the wild are constantly plagued by biting insects and skin parasites, but some have found a natural solution. They will actively seek out and catch specific types of millipedes. They will then gently roll and rub these millipedes all over their fur. Why are they doing this? These millipedes, when agitated, secrete a powerful chemical cocktail that is a highly effective insect repellent. 
The monkeys are using these creatures as a living bug spray, a tool to protect themselves from painful bites and the diseases those bites can carry. They are practicing a form of self-medication, using their deep instinctual knowledge of their environment to solve a medical problem. With all these incredible examples, it begs the question, why do not all monkeys use tools? If it is such a great advantage, why is it not more common? The answer is a complex mix of three key factors. The first is necessity. As the old saying goes, necessity is the mother of invention. Many of the monkeys that use tools live in challenging environments where food is hard to get. The capuchins need their hammers because the palm nuts are too tough. If a monkey lives in a lush forest, overflowing with easy-to-eat soft fruits, there is simply no evolutionary pressure for it to invent tools. Life is too easy. The second factor is physical ability. Not all monkeys are built for it. Using a tool effectively requires a specific set of anatomical gifts. It requires hands with opposable thumbs and incredible dexterity to grip and manipulate an object. It also requires a certain level of brain power, a brain that is capable of understanding cause and effect and of planning the steps needed to achieve a goal. The third, and perhaps most important, factor is social learning. Tool use is not something a monkey is born knowing how to do. It is a culture, and it can only survive if it is passed down through the generations. A young monkey must have the opportunity to watch and learn from its elders. If a troop is small, or if a natural disaster wipes out the knowledgeable older members, an entire tradition of tool use could be lost in a single generation. This is why we see tool use in some populations of a species, but not in others just a few miles away. They have different cultures. This leads us to the deepest question of all. When a monkey picks up a tool, does it know what it is going to do with it? Is it planning for the future? We see hints that the answer is yes. Capuchins have been observed carrying their favorite, most effective hammerstone with them from one nut cracking site to another. This suggests they have foresight. They understand that this specific tool will be useful again in the future and it is worth the effort to carry it. This is not just reacting to a problem. This is planning a solution. The world of monkey tool use is a stunning display of intelligence, adaptability, and culture. It shatters the old idea that humans are the only creatures on Earth with this special skill. From the Stone Age capuchins smashing nuts, to the clever inventors of leafy sponges, to the hygiene-conscious flossers of Thailand, Monkeys have shown us that the drive to innovate and solve problems is a deep and powerful force in the primate family. It reminds us that we are not as unique as we once thought, and that the roots of our own ingenuity run deep into our shared evolutionary past. If you enjoyed this look into the incredible intelligence of monkeys, please take a second to like, share, and subscribe. It helps us continue growing and bringing more videos to our amazing community and we would love to know what you think. Which monkey topic would you like to see from us next? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next one.